Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going through a breakdown of how to shop using a Japanese shopping service. I'm actually going to be kind of referencing off of the video that I learned how to use the shopping service that I'm going to be showing you and that I use um, from Lou Graves and I'm going to put their link to their video and their channel in the description. Very appreciative of their video. I definitely recommend checking that out too for more information about it if you feel a little bit iffy about my tutorial. I just decided I was going to make my own tutorial as well just to kind of talk about um, my whole process with it and I'm actually going to be uploading an unboxing video that I did with my friend because me and her did combined order with it which we have also just did a combined order recently that I'm going to be getting somewhat within the next week or two but yeah I just wanted to do my own breakdown video to kind of put any info that I wasn't sure of in my first experience doing it and giving you some advice as well. So the shopping service that I use is called Japan Shopping Service and like Lou says in their video is that it does look like it has it's, it's a little sketchy because it looks like it hasn't been updated since like 2005 or something. It's a very it's not a very flashy website. It's not a very um, colorful, modern looking website, but um, it's still efficient. And I'm gonna be putting some of the screen footage that I have regarding the steps by steps over here right next to me. First thing you're going to want to do is look at the website that you're going to be wanting to buy from. I have only bought in off of Frill, but I've helped my friend buy from Macari using the same shopping service before. So you can use Macari Japan, Yahoo Japan Auctions. I think they also have a PayPal um, auction website that's a Japanese one. I've never used that, but that was also an option. Um, Rakuten slash Frill. Um, that's what I have the most experience in. So we're going to be talking about that in particular. Once you go onto the Japan Shopping Service website, you're going to be greeted with their news media of what is the new updates with their site and their shopping services. And with COVID going on, I would recommend looking closely at that so that you know what to expect when you're ordering something. Right now, it's only FedEx priority for people living in the US at the very least. I'm from the US, so that is what I'm speaking off of. So it's going to be a little bit pricier, but I can say that FedEx priority is so good for at least that I've, um, the experience I've had using them, especially with the shopping service. I actually got my package within a day, which it was supposed to be three days, one to three days, but I got within a day, which was crazy, especially for where I live because I almost never get my mail on time. It's always really late. So I was really shocked about that. So step one, find out what shop you're going to be using. We're going to be using Frill for this example. So go on to Frill. You can actually find the links on the Japan Shopping Service website. Then you can just click there and it'll directly take you to those websites or you can just Google them on your own. Once you get to Frill, type in whatever brand you're looking for. Let's say Beauty the Stars Shine Bright and scroll around and find something that you're interested in. I use Google Chrome and it translates everything on the page, which is very helpful. So I would recommend using that and checking off the only for sale option so that you can see the stuff that's only for sale and not what was in the past. You can also go in through the filters just like you do with any other shopping online store, like low to high, high to low, all that stuff. So once you find an item that you like, click on it. I would really recommend reading the description making sure that you know all of the terms of their services, what you're expecting, if there's any ailments on the item. A lot of the time in Japan, they always say amateur inspection. So just keep that in mind. That's always always might be the case. If you don't care that much about like whether there's some little a thread that's popping or something that's like not noticeable, then just keep aware of that. Also, something I would highly recommend based on one of my first experiences using Frill is I would read the person's 
um, shop description. If you scroll down, you can see their shop description and they kind of usually say a little bit about their lives. And I think this is a very important part because the first person that I ever tried buying from, they said that in their um, shopping description that they were a new mom, so they were pretty, very busy. They could take a little bit in time unresponding to selling their items. I usually now after that first experience of trying to buy from somebody who was not that available, I don't usually buy from people who are not that available anymore because what ended up happening was sometimes you can buy immediately and sometimes you cannot buy immediately. In this case, she did not have it set up where you could buy it immediately and I was not aware of that. The shopping service waited about a week and I think it's like usually they wait between 7 to 10 days until the seller hasn't contacted them and they usually write a comment if it's taking a minute they write a comment in the person's listing and say hey i am interested in buying and if the con if the seller does not respond then they will send you an email saying hey we are refunding your purchase the seller did not respond so we are not proceeding it usually was supposed to take i think they had like a 30 day re refund period luckily they gave it to me within the next few days but i was kind of worried about it so i was like i'm not gonna try risking it again so they did refund me right away which was a really great thing so that's always really good to know they refunded me right away and it was through paypal so it's all saved and it's all in files i would highly recommend please read the store description so that you know that there is a possibility that this person may or may not respond to your shopping service trying to buy from them. So next thing, once you check all those things, another tip is that sometimes they do say that the, the listing is on other websites, other auctioning websites. So keep that in mind too, that you might not actually end up getting what you think you might get, just as you would in like any other your own country or English websites where people have things listed in other areas. But yes, there's also these little tab tags on the top of the listings on Frill where they will talk about like um, anonymous delivery, all these like different little perks that they can do. Um, and often you'll see immediate purchase available. And that is kind of what I was talking about. If you see that, then that's always a really great sign because that means that no matter the circumstance, um, you can send over the item that you want to get and your shopping service can buy it right away. And there's no issues of like this person waiting and like waiting for them to get online and respond to their shopping service and like you're in this waiting game. So once you decide, okay, I want this item, you're going to take the URL of that item, go on to Japan shopping service, hit order, and then you're going to put in the URL, the URL, and you're going to put the title as what the title is on the listing. I just copy paste it. Um, and then you write the amount that it's online for. And then you just hit submit. There's also an option to talk about what um, kind of shipping you want to do but i always just say wait until my shopping service receives the item because i usually multi i do multiple items so i just say wait and then you confirm and there's going to be a shopping service fee but the fee is very low for the shopping service which is why it's so great in comparison to a lot of other shopping services so then it's going to take you right to paypal where you're going to give the exact amount of money that it would be in japanese yen for the item that you want and then the service fee and that will be sent to them and then it'll be in the processing state. In the processing state, that is where they're going to try buying the item. And once it is approved by the seller in Japan, then they will say, okay, we are waiting for the item and you'll get another email. And also in your history tab on the Japan shopping service under your account, you can see all of the history of your order transactions and you can see what status they are at. And that's always helpful to know. So usually there will be a waiting for an item between one to like seven days. That's usually how it goes. The um, Japan shipping seems to be really quick. Most of my items get there like the next day or two. It's very fast. I wish that I could experience that. And then the shopping service can hold your items for packing them all up into one package. They can hold it for a certain amount of time before they start charging you. This is the amount of time that they wait until they start charging you each day, but it's a good amount of time and I wouldn't worry about it. So once you are ready, 
all your items have come in, you are going to hit request to pack and they're going to say, okay, great. We got your request to pack and we will let you know and send you an invoice once we pack it all up for you and um, make out the shipping label. Because that's when you're going to decide what your shipping is. In this time that you are watching this, we are with in the pandemic so you only have fedex priority which is the most expensive shipping but you will get it very quickly and even though it's really expensive you're getting a good service so it's kind of worth it you're gonna hit fedex priority send it off and then they will send you an invoice this is where you're gonna fill out your customs form and this is really great because you can say what you want them to declare on the customs form Luckily in America, customs doesn't really hit us as hard with fines as a lot of other places in the world. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, I always hear about people in Canada and stuff and then they'll be like, yeah, I bought this dress that was $300 and then I paid like $100 custom fees. And I was like, whoa, that's a lot. So thankfully, I think it's just, if everything is under, I believe $1,000, in America, especially when it's clothing, then you don't have to pay any extra fees. So for me, I just put exactly how much they are worth. I just put the exact value. I, I don't lie on it. I mean, I'm not telling you to lie on it, but I'm just saying that you can declare your own stuff. So take that risk for yourself. A lot of people tend to just put whatever they think that they're not going to get fees for. This is the part that I got kind of lost on. I overthought a lot of things because I overthink a lot of things. Which I'm like, oh, what do I list these items as? Do I list them as clothing or do I list them as used clothing? Because they are used clothing, right? In the end, I did have them set as used clothing. The reason why I was confused about that was because it said used cloths, like rags. And I was like, they're not rags, they're clothing. <laughs> so I was really confused on what to put them as. I ended up putting them as used clothing. Honestly, I don't think it matters that much, but that's what I ended up doing. I do think I was just overthinking it really rationally. <laughs> But if that's also a concern of yours, which it was a concern of mine, that's what I ended up putting. I had to read a bunch of forms and try to figure out what people put them as, but that's ended up what I put them as was under used clothing. And I think that just normal clothing would have been fine too. Okay, this form probably seems really stupid for everybody else watching this, but this was a genuine concern I had and I didn't think that I was that stupid. But if you think I'm stupid for thinking this way, I'm sorry, but this is just what I was nervous about. So there was a part where it said a certain type of number. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I'll put that here. And basically it's a certain number that if you are a company, you would put it down and that's where they can hold you as um, like an insurance kind of a thing, like tax, it's like a tax thing. But if you are not a company and you're just a person, you would put your social security number normally. However, I was like, I don't wanna give my social security number to this shopping service that seems really sketch. Do not do this, do not give your social security number. But I'm just trying to advise you to not put it down. I you, basically you just leave that blank. Do not put anything, <laughs> just leave it blank, it'll be fine. The only reason why, why I wasn't just gonna leave it blank anyways was because it said something about like leaving it blank and how it was like important to fill out. So that's why I was like confused. And I was like, Ugh. just leave it blank. They don't need your social security number leave it blank. And then you're like, confirm, you'll pay it, and your item is on your way. And then you'll get your item, and then it'll be great. <laughs> and I know this was a whole long video, and I'm sorry if it was not that clear, but that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about, and I do hope that it's helpful, and I hope you have a good experience with the shopping service, and that it goes clean. <laughs> All right, see you guys another time. Bye.